Hello. In this video, we will have a look at what an ONTAP consistency point is and why it is important to understand the creation of consistency points. So we'll have a look at what it is and how to view the frequency and the types of consistency points and how this knowledge can help you in, for example, tackling performance problems. And we will finish with a little demo. To understand what a consistency point is, there are two features that need to be clear. One, how does the flow of a write request go? And two, how does the Waffle file system, which is the file system that ONTAP uses, how does that work? There are three players that are important with regards to consistency points. First, there's random access memory. Data entering a node will be written to a buffer in RAM. Secondly, non-volatile RAM. Data that enters a node will be copied to NVRAM. And thirdly, flexible volume. The data in RAM will be written to the volume. Now, how does that work? This can best be explained graphically, I think. So here's RAM, NVRAM, and a flexible volume. When data enters the node, it is first written to RAM. Then it is copied to NVRAM. When data is in NVRAM, the client will be acknowledged that the data is safe. Now, based on a predefined trigger, the data will be written to the volume. This is the start of a consistency point. During the creation of a consistency point, the clients can still be acknowledged because the second part of NVRAM will be used to make sure the data is safe. And when all the data is on disk, and so the consistency point is complete, NVRAM will be flushed. Now when is the data written to the volume, or in other words, when is a consistency point started? This happens at predefined moments, and there are multiple predefined moments. We're going to list those later, but for now, let's just mention two. The first trigger is based on time. After 10 seconds, a memory buffer will be written to the volume, and then NVRAM will be cleared. The second trigger is when the first NVRAM bank is full in a single node cluster, or when a quarter of NVRAM is full when it concerns an HA pair. The reason for that is that with an HA pair, data is not just copied to the NVRAM of the node that receives the data, but also to the partner node so that if the node fails, the partner node can take over. And only when the data is in the partner node's NVRAM, the client is acknowledged. And of course, eventually, the data will be written to disk, and the procedure repeats. Now, what exactly is a consistency point? Waffle is a Unix-type file system and uses pointers to create a structure of 4 kilobyte blocks on disk. And at the top of this tree of pointers, there is the root inode, which is the starting point of the file system. Now, consistency point involves writing all of the data blocks from the write buffer to disk. And if all of the blocks are on disk, then the root inode of the volume is overwritten, which creates a new view of the active file system. So if a consistency point is started, all blocks will be written to disk from the bottom up, so to say. Since Waffle never overwrites data blocks, new blocks will be written for every block that needs to be changed. And then finally, the root inode is overwritten and will give a new view of the file system. So the only block that gets an overwrite is the root inode. And after that, the consistency point is complete and the blocks on disk that are no longer needed can be freed to be reused again for new writes. And as stated earlier, there are multiple triggers that can cause a consistency point. We already saw that every 10 seconds, there's a consistency point based on time. And if a threshold of new blocks in memory is breached, the so-called high watermark causes a consistency point. And when NVRAM is half full, or in the case of an HA pair, is full for one-fourth. NVLOG holds the number of changes to the file system, and this can also cause a CP. We're going to skip B for a second. The O means that there is an other reason for a consistency point. For example, when a snapshot is taken. Just before the snapshot, a CP will have to be created to get a consistent snapshot. The colon says that a CP was started, and when we measure it again, the CP is not finished yet. And finally, when the NVLOG is full, it says that the next measurement will show a B. Now back to the B. The B stands for back-to-back. -back. This means that if one consistency point is being written, the other NVRAM bank also fills up. So after the CP is done, a new CP has to be written again. Now why is this bad? Well, if both NVRAM parts are full, the clients can at that moment not be acknowledged, which means an increase in latency for the client. Clients don't like latency, so if your node shows multiple back-to-back -back CPs, performance will drop and clients may start to complain. 
Since NVRAM cannot be extended, the cause of the back-to-back -back CPs should be looked for outside of NVRAM and in most cases it simply means that the writing of the CP takes too much time. So you should investigate the layout of the aggregate. The size of the RAID groups might well be a cause. So a solution may be that you either add more disks to the aggregates, check whether the RAID groups are not unequally sized, or move volumes to a different aggregate on a different node. Now let's have a look. As you probably know, next to the cluster shell where you normally work from, there is also the node shell that connects you directly to a single node and you can run commands from there. The command we need for this is the sysstat command, which will give node statistics and with the lowercase u, we will see consistency points and the reason for each consistency point. And the interval we will use is 3 seconds. Now in the bottom two terminals I've logged into two different Linux machines from which I have mounted a volume via NFS. So we check that on the Linux machines and we see we have a remote mount on both. And then we run the command, the sysstat command, to start monitoring. And at the moment everything is quiet. So every now and then a consistency point based on time is created. And when no data has to be written because there's no data that's entered the system, even after 10 seconds there will be no consistency point. Now let's widen this terminal a little bit so we see the command better. All we do is we copy some data and we do that in a while true loop. We pretty soon see that the high watermark causes a consistency point. And when we put some more load on the volume on the other Linux machine, we see back-to-back -back consistency point. And this is not optimal for performance. The reason for every consistency point in this situation is that both NVRAM banks are full all the time and we see that the disk usage is nearly 100%. So we've seen that the creation of a consistency point means that data is written to disk and the creation of a consistency point is complete when a new root inode is in place and NVRAM is flushed. We've also seen that if the writing of a consistency point takes too much time, both NVRAM parts will fill up and you will get back-to-back -back consistency points, which is bad for performance.